Hello everyone! Welcome to Feast at Home. We hope to inspire you today with God's message. As 2020 is about to end, let's prepare for our spiritual journey for the year ahead. Have a daily dose of God's Word with our Feast Devotionals 2021. We have Didache for your daily Bible reflections, Sabbath for your scripture meditation, and Companion or Gabay for your daily Catholic diary. All books are available at www.feastbooks.ph Grab your copies now and make your prayer a daily habit. TikTok is so popular these days, right? So, why don't we bring it to the feast? But of course, we tweaked it a bit for our young feasters. So, we're inviting you on November 8, 3 p.m. for our special youth event, prepared by no less than our youth ministry. It's entitled, TikTok. It's free and it's fun. Join us by going to the link that is flashed on your screen. Feast Conference 2020 is finally here! Three days of new learnings, new discoveries, and new beginnings. Experience God with your family in the new normal, right at the comfort of your home. Join us on November 20, 21, and 22 as we gather for the biggest inspirational event. Don't forget to get your tickets online at feastconference.com. There are actually three ticket types available, 300 for youth, 995 for regular access, and 1995 for premium access, which already comes with a complimentary shirt. So what are you waiting for? Register now and get ready to be blessed. Feastcon 2020, in the beginning. When God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And you know what? The Gospel of John says that, brings us back to the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And then he says the word was made flesh. And then he talks about Jesus. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding, opening your eyes that God, the one who created all this, and the Jesus who is the Word made flesh, they've not stopped creating new things. God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what feast Conference 2020 is all about. Hey, we're going to have brand new workshops and brand new classes and fellowships. God's going to speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's going to do something new. Face Conference 2020 in the beginning.
we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a, a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story, we're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. with us here at Feast at Home. I would also like to greet all those who are viewing with us for the first time. And for all those who are watching from other parts of the Philippines, let me just greet you a bit special with your own language. Kaadlaw, maayong buntag, maupay na aga. And for all those who are watching with us from other parts of the globe, Ni hao, konnichiwa, ala, bonju, anio, namaste, sawalika. God speaks to us in different languages, but let me tell you this, one language remains universal, and that is love. Let us now celebrate God's love today as I invite you now to sing this song and entrust your heart to Him who will be fully keeping it protected and safe at all times. Come on, let us now stand up, get up on our feet, clap if you must, run if you must, and dance and sing this song. Sing our first song today. Sing Make Her This Past Month. Make her up the skies. You hear my faintest sigh. Paint her up the stars. Keep her up my heart. Last your love all night. Life is in your hands. 
Isn't it amazing that God has expanded His scope and that He can now reach us online? Yes, God's connection has upgraded too. In our terms nowadays, God is following the trend. Like Instagram, He follows us wherever we go. He likes and celebrates what we do. Like YouTube and other online streaming portals, preachings can now be viewed online. Like Google, whenever we are lost, God can search for us right away. And just like the online shops, God's market has a lot to offer. Imagine there's never any supply of love and blessings delivered to our homes. All this because God loves us so much that He wants to make His presence known to each and every one. Yet amidst all this, we are still terrified and anxious of what we see and hear on social media. It adds on to the pressing issues that we are currently experiencing, and it makes us greatly troubled. This is synonymous to some biblical accounts that we've had way back, wherein God's people are put into trial, and what's more important is that God is always there to the rescue. My friends, we're now living in a terrifying season again where we cannot see what we are battling. But God wants us to focus more on Him. As God says on His Word, on Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. Let His Word be your anchor and flex this faith during this season. I now invite you to pray with me. Let us now all come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we know you are ever present in all the days of our lives. You are our path, you are our guide. You have planted seeds of faith in us, and you promise to protect us. Let let our doubts and darkness speak to us and remind us to focus on you no matter what. This we pray in your mighty name. Amen. Let us now come into worship. Let's come to him in full surrender.
for the past few weeks, we have been, we, so, sorry, for the fa- past few months, we have been in a setup where in the, you, you are listening to three preachers. But today, instead of listening to three preachers, we broke down every preacher and then we, we assigned them different talks. And today, in this 2 p.m. session, we are going to talk about an interesting topic entitled, Is This For Me? How to discern God's will in my daily life. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, litong-lito ka na ba? Meron ka bang desisyon na hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo? Siguro iba sa inyo iniisip, babalikan ko ba yung ex ko? Ipaglalaban ko ba siya? O ilelet go ko na siya? Uh, should I resign from my job? Or should I keep it and keep on fighting? Should I migrate into another another country or stay here in the Philippines? Or you, you, some of you might be thinking, Mag-aasawa ba ako, o magbamadre, o magpapare, or magiging single blessed for my entire life. And those are big decisions in your life. But I believe even also in the small decisions in your life, you need God's guidance. At yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. How do we know if we are following God's will or not? And if you're in for that, I invite you for this wonderful talk. And I want you to sit back, relax. Open your hearts, open your minds, and prepare to be blessed by God today. Amen? But before we jump into our talk, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Together, let's make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, pray this with me. Lift your hands. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Brothers and sisters, we are going to talk about the topic, Is This For Me? How to Discern God's Will in My Daily Life. And by the way, you're in for a treat today because we are actually live. And if you have questions, you can type it in the comment section. And hopefully, I can answer it in the latter part of my talk because we will have a Q&A portion before I, I close the talk in the end. But today, our word for today, I'd like us to read from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says here, It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Again, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And you see, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, being a God in heaven, he came down here on earth. You want to know his reason? Because he want to marry heaven and earth. He wants to unite us, to unify God and man. And Jesus is the ultimate unifier. He unified God and man. And I believe in this. This is also the reason why he came down here on earth so that we can be like him as well. For us to share in his glory, we should be in constant pursuit of being unified in him. Na sana yung puso natin, yung isip natin ay kaisa ng puso at isipan ng Diyos. We want to be one with him in mind, in heart, and especially in deeds. Thinking his thoughts, feeling his heartbeat, and doing his will. However, how can we know that we are actually being unified with God's will? Kasi most of the time, minsan yung gusto natin, kaiba dun sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. And for us human beings, yun ang goal natin. Sana magmatch, magtugma yung gusto ng Diyos at gusto natin. However, John 10.10 10 says, I have came so that you might have life and have it in abundance. However, let me ask you this question as I start this talk. Ano nga ba ang sikreto? What's the secret to a full life? You know what's the answer? It's God and you. Of course, we want God. We love God. We need God. However, I believe in this. 
God also needs you. He needs your cooperation. In fact, ito, tingnan nyo ito ah. Meron ba kayo nakikitang upuan or mesa dyan sa bahay ninyo? Alam nyo, ito ang totoo ah. Sa buong buhay na ang Diyos ay naging Diyos, never pa siyang gumawa ng mesa, ng upuan, ng cellphone. Nagkikits yung sinasabi ko. Never siyang gumawa nun... And yet, we have chairs, we have tables, we have cell phones, we have gadgets. Why? Because for for man to actually have these things, God needs man's cooperation. Kailangan makipagtulungan. Ang Diyos, ibibigay niya lahat ng resources, ng materials, ng intellect, ng galing, ng talino. But at the end of the day, ang tanong ito, gagamitin mo ba ito? Gagamitin ba ng tao ito? In the same way, God has given you all the talents, all the gifts, all the opportunities, everything you need. The question is this, are you going to cooperate with God in order for fullness of life to happen in our lives? And here's my message for you today. When you cooperate with God, when you cooperate with God's grace rather, fullness of life happens. Brothers and sisters, gusto mo ba ng buhay na mabunga at punong-puno ng biyaya? My prayer is that today, you are going to cooperate with what God wants for your life. And if you're ready for God's blessing to pour upon your life, let me invite you into prayer. Close your eyes, bow down your heads, put your hands over your hearts, and pray this after me. Jesus, thank you for blessing me with this life. Thank you for giving me the talents, the people, the opportunities, the raw materials, everything I need in order to live a full life. Give me the grace to cooperate with you so that I may give glory to you through my life. All these, Father, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's order God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Brothers and sisters, again, we are in this talk talking about discernment. And let me start off by defining what discernment is. Lahat tayo, meron tayong mga desisyon na gusto nating gawin at pinagpipilian sa buhay. Pero we have heard about discernment, pero ano nga ba talaga ito? And let me define discernment to you today, my dear brothers and sisters. Discernment is the process of knowing God's will. Yan po yan. It's the process of knowing God's will. And when we talk about the process of knowing God's will, the mere fact that we are discerning at pinag-iisipan natin, ano bang gagawin ko? Kagustuhan ba ito ng Diyos? We have two presuppositions. The first one is this. The reason why we are discerning is that because we believe that God has desires and plans for my life. Number two, discernment happens when it's always a choice between two or more goods. Dapat dalawang mabuting bagay. Kasi kung kasalanan at kabutihan ang pinagpipilian mo, that should be a no-brainer. Hindi na pinagdidiscernan yan. Bakit? Kasi dapat dalawang bagay na mabuti ang pinagpipilian. So, yan nga yung sinasabi ko. Should I, should, I, should I leave my job or start a new business? Should I leave my boyfriend and, and, find, and find a new one or move on? Ganyan. Dalawang mabuting bagay. And, you see, taayo, we want to discern. We want to know God's will. You don't want to know why? Kasi naniniwala tayo na yung kagustuhan ng Diyos is always the best for us. We want to discern because we know His plans and His will for us is for our best. In fact, Jeremiah 29.11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Kaya nga tayo, gustong-gusto natin alamin, kagustuhan ba ito ni Lord? Ito nga bang gusto niya sa akin? Kasi alam natin, kapag nalaman natin yung kagustuhan ng Diyos at yun ang ginawa natin, malamang ang ending, tayo rin ang magiging masaya because God simply wants the best for us. Am I making sense here? Now, the goal of this talk is this. 
is the goal of this talk is to give you a tool on how to decide powerfully in big life decisions. So let's jump into it. Type in the comment section if you are ready. Say, I'm ready. If you're ready, let's jump into it. How to know God's will. Merong apat na bagay na kailangan tayo. In order to know God's will, we need the word. We need the whys. We need the why. And we need the walk. Apat na W para hindi na kayo mahirapang i-memorize yan. So the first W is all about the word. The word. When I talk about the word, the word means Bible, the Bible and church teaching. At kapag nagde-decide ka sa, sa buhay mo, anong gagawin mo, you need to consult the word of God. For example, ito ah. Halimbawa, nakasakay ka sa bus. Tapos habang nakasakay ka sa bus, uh, nagdarasa ka, Lord, hindi ko alam gagawin ko. Wala na akong pera. Kailangan ko kumita. Tapos habang nandung ka sa bus, ito na. Pagtayo nung katabi mo, naiwan niya yung wallet mo. Ikaw, at that moment, maaaring biglang naglaro sa isip mo, Lord, is this my answered prayer? Ito na ba ang sagot mo sa dasal ko? And at that moment, you have a choice. Kukunin mo ba yung wallet o hindi? But let me tell you this. If you consult the word of God, the word of God says, Thou shall not steal. So ikaw, natural, hindi mo dapat kunin yun. Why? Because when you consult the word, chances are, you will make the right decisions. Because for crying out loud, this is an issue between right and wrong and the word says, thou shall not steal. So wag mo talaga dapat kunin. However, when I'm talk, talking about consulting the word of God, I want you to understand that in life, you need to have a life manual. And for me, the best life manual is the Bible. I want you to read the word kasi yan ang pinaka the best life manual eh. And ito lang, hindi porket sinabi kong konsultahin yung salita ng Diyos, you need to read the entirety and the context of the whole Bible. Kaya kailangan regular ang ating prayer time, scripture time. Kasi minsan, merong ito, merong ibang mga tao, ginagamit nila yung Bible, tapos nagba-Bible cut sila. Ano yung Bible cutting? Bible cutting is this, halimbawa, Lord, nalulungkot ako. Ano bang gagawin mo? Anong, anong gusto mong gawin ko sa buhay ko? Show me a sign. Lead me to the proper verse. So ikaw, binibble cut mo. Pag Bible cut mong ganyan, turo kang ganyan. Ah, ayan. Ang problema, ito ang nabasa mo. Di ba? Ano mong problema ka na? Nalulungkot ka na sa buhay mo. Ang nabasa mo, nakasulat. And then Judas went away and hanged himself. Patay tayo dyan. Baka bigla kang mag-suicide. I, I, I'm, I'm not against um, trying to look for signs from the Lord, but you need to be very careful because when you read the Bible, you need to read the entirety and you need to know the proper context because that's, that can be very dangerous. However, when we read the Word, I want you to understand that the Bible is actually a great life manual. While it will not always give you specific instructions on how to decide for your choices, it always gives in instructions on how you can be more Christ-like. May sasabihin ng Bible sa'yo kung ano yung values na kailangan mong i-uphold. And the Spirit, I believe in this, it happens to me all the time, the Spirit has a way of speaking to you and guiding you by slowly. And the second thing, that's the first one. You need to have the word. The second thing, the second W that you need to know God's will is this. You need the wise. You need wise people in your life. You need to consult mentors. People na mas marunong, mas magaling, mas may experience sa'yo, mas nakakaintindi. And you see, my dear brothers and sisters, in fact, Sirach 636 says this. If you see an intelligent man, visit him early. Let your footwear out his doorstep. Anong sinasabi dito? Pag meron ka nakilalang wise na tao, puntahan mo siya kagad. Kunin mo kagad yung knowledge na Pick his brain. Ilagay mo kagad. Pumasok ka sa bahay niya. But let, bakit let your footwear out his doorstep? Kasi nung unang panahon, parang sa atin, di ba? Pagpapasok ka sa bahay ng wise man, ng tao, ibang tao, huhubarin mo muna yung sapatos mong panlabas para papasok ka sa loob. And then you get to know the life of that person and then you get to pick his brain and hopefully be inspired and helped by his wisdom. Ito ang problema. 
Pag meron tayong desisyon na kailangan gawin, marami sa atin nagkakamali. Bakit? Dahil merong kumakalat na epidemya, mas malupit pa sa COVID-19. Kaya tayo maraming tao ang nasa stock dahil sa isang problema. Sakit ito eh. Alam mo yung sakit? Yung sakit na tinatawag na acne. Ano yung acne? Hindi yung pimples, hindi yung binubukbok, hindi yon. Acne, hindi yung parang ito. Napansin nyo ba, meron akong parang pimple dito. Hindi yan. Acne means A-K-N-Y. In short for, alam ko na yan. Ayan. Lagi tayo nagmamarunong. Minsan, meron tayong desisyon na kailangan alamin ang gawin. Pero tayo din. Alam ko na yan. Napagdaanan ko na yan. Kaya ang ending, we trust, yes, we trust our God. But sometimes, it's wiser to seek mentors. Kaya ito lang gusto kong sabihin sa inyo. When you do not know what to do with your life, better yet, magtanong. Libre lang po ang magtanong. Walang bayad. Consult a spiritual director. In my life, I have also have a preaching mentor. In my marriage, I have a marriage mentor. In my finances, nung ako'y lubog na lubog sa utang hanggang ngayon, I have a financial mentor. For my business, I have a business mentor. For my body, for my health, I have a fitness mentor. Why? Because I know I do not know everything. I am. Can you type it in, in, in the comment section? I do not know everything. Because the moment you think you know everything, that's the moment that you actually know nothing. Amen? Consult the wise. The third W is this. You need to have your why. The why. And what do I mean with the why? First things first, I want you to identify your sacred personal mission. As for me, nung ako po yung mga 22, 23 years old, I was pondering about upon my life mission. And ito po ang naging life mission statement ko. To inspire people to live full lives by communicating God's love to them. That's why right now, I'm a preacher. I'm a I may corporate speaker as well. I, I also post vlogs on my Facebook page. And because that, I believe, is my personal call, personal sacred mission from the Lord. And, and the moment I knew about my personal sacred mission, everything becomes clearer in my life. And kapag alam mo kasi yung mission mo, klaro sa'yo kung ano yung dapat gawin mo, kung ano ang tawag sa'yo ng Diyos, Everything else, every opportunity that may come your way will actually be clear to you na ano, hindi ko dapat muna gawin yan. Bakit? Kasi ito yung klaro sa akin, ito yung sacred mission ko. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because I want you to understand this. Ang discernment po, hindi po yan number one. Hindi po yan, it's not just a simply, sorry, it's not simply a desire to serve God and His people. Kasi po, Lahat tayo, tinawag ng Diyos na magsilbi sa Kanya. That's God's general will for all of us. To love and serve Him. Ito ang issue bakit tayo nagdi-discern. We are discerning because we are asking the specifics. Lord, how do you want me to serve? How am I being called to serve? And for example, dito sa feast, marami tayong servants dito. Ako po, Ang, ang tawag sa akin ng Diyos is to become God's mouthpiece here at the feast. I'm a preacher. For some of us here at the feast, they are called to sing for the Lord, to be God's um, voice box, to be God's um, music. Ayan. Yung iba sa atin, we, we are we, we, nasa finance ministry because they are being called by God to become stewards of His blessings and resources, etc., etc. But all of us here, we are called to become disciples. To, to bring others closer to Jesus and more importantly for us to go closer to the people so that we can bring Jesus to them. Am I making sense here? So, when we discern, tanong yung sarili ninyo, ano ba yung specific na pinapagawa sa akin ng Diyos? And how do you know kung ano yun? Look at your gifts. Look at, look at your potential. Saan ka ba magaling? Ano rin yung mga opportunities na nasa harapan mo? Because maybe that is actually God's blaring sign that is telling you where He is leading you to go. Ayan. Number two, what discernment is not is. 
discernment is not simply a desire to do God's work. I want you to know that all God's work is good. Ang issue dito is for you to distinguish between God's work and God's will. While I, while I, um, bago ko po na discovery yung aking personal sacred mission to become, uh, to inspire people, to be God's communicator. Nung nagserve ako sa youth community, ang, ang iba-ibang ministry ang 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 kinabibilang ko. I was part of the uh, physical arrangement ministry. Kami yung taga setup ng upuan, ng ng sound system, ganyan. I was I also became for a time in the in the ushers ministry, greeting people coming in. Naging part din ako ng music ministry, uh, et cetera, et cetera. However, I can do those things still until today. And it's equally good in God's eyes. However, because I already distinguish God's unique calling in my life, it's much easier for me to tell other people. Pag sinasabi sa akin, Belden, pwede ka ba kumanta? Pwede naman. Pero I'd rather give it to the people who, are, who God called to sing at the feast. Am I making sense here? So it's just, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's just that my calling is clear to me to be God's communicator, just like what I'm doing right now. Am I making sense here? I am. So, what's the point of discernment? Discernment is after a specific way in which you are called by God to fulfill your sacred personal mission. Ayan. However, ito ang malaking tanong. How do we know if we are actually hitting God's will? if we are actually doing what God wants us to do. I'd like to share to you the story, powerful story in the Bible about this, this blind man called Bartimaeus. Ang pangalan niya si Bartimaeus. Alam mo ito si Bartimaeus, sobrang bulag siya ng matagal na panahon. And every single day, nandun lang siya sa labas, nasa kalye, at naghihintay, hindi ko alam kung ano hinihintay niya, siguro naghihintay siya ng kagalingan, Nagi, or siguro for so many years na sanay na siyang bulag siya. However, one day, he heard Jesus passing by. And he knew at that moment, that is his opportunity to get healed. And nung narinig niya si Jesus na dumadaan, alam mo ang sinig- ginawa ni Bartimeo, sumigaw siya, Son of David, have mercy on, on me! Son of David, have mercy on me! Inulit pa niya pangatlong beses, Son of David, have mercy on me! Nung nabagpog, yung maraming tao, alam niyo, Pinatawag siya ni Jesus. At nung tinawag siya ni Jesus, alam nyo, tinanong siya ni Jesus nitong tanong na ito. Mark 10, 51. Jesus asked him, sabi ni Jesus, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And I don't know about you. Kung ako yun si Bartimeo, sasabihin ko kay, kay, kay Jesus, da Lord, hindi ba obvious? Bulag ako. Alang alam ang sabihin ko sa'yo, gusto kong makalakad. Natural, gusto kong makakita. And why did, the question is this, why did Jesus ask this question? Actually, Jesus did not ask this question. Hindi niya tinanong si Bartimeus itong tanong na ito, hindi dahil sa hindi niya alam kung anong gusto ni Bartimeus. Alam niya, bulag eh. He, he's much better than that. In fact, he's all-knowing. Alam ng Diyos, bulag siya at yun ang gusto ni Bartimeus. However, God is throwing back the question to Bartimaeus. Ikaw ba? What do you want me to do for you? In other words, gustong-gusto mo ba talagang gumaling? Gustong-gusto mo ba talagang makakita? Kasi baka mamaya, hindi niya gusto. At alam niyo ang Diyos, napakabait. Kapag hindi niyo gusto, talaga, hindi ka niya rin pipilitin. And you see, why am I sharing this to you? Because I believe your why, what you need to do in your life, is that mission is actually written in your heart. Naalala ko itong sinabi nitong aking spiritual mentor when I was still in, in theology, when I was still studying my master's in theology. One of my mentors there is Father Manoling Francisco. At during that time, I was discerning uh, whether magpapari ba ako or whether I was for married life. So I seriously thought I was for priesthood for a time. And then while I was consulting him, ano, alam nyo, 
nung tinatanong ko siya, Father, ano kayang will sa akin ni Lord? Magpapari ba ako? Mag, 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 mag-aasawa ako? Alam mo, ang sagot lang sa akin ni Father Manuling, ikaw, anong gusto mo? Ano talaga yung gustong-gusto mo? And ako sabi ko, hindi nga, Father, ang gusto ko nga malaman kung ano yung gusto ni Lord para sa akin. At alam mo yung sabi ni Father Manuling, hindi nga ikaw, anong gusto mo? And he proceeded on when I was startled by his question, sabi lang ni Father Manuling ito, alam mo, Belden, alam mo lang ano yung gusto mo. Bakit? Yung gustong gusto mo talaga. Pag tinanggal mo yung lahat ng outer layers ng desire mo, makikita mo yung kagustuhan ng Diyos para sa iyo. And he said this, I will never forget this, sabi niya, we think that God's will is found out there, somewhere in the stars. That's not true. God's will is found within. Because ultimately, God's will is your deepest desire. God's will is your deepest desire. And when he, when he said that thing, it really hit me. And alam nyo, kung kinalkal ko yung puso ko, alam nyo, narealize ko, the reason why I really wanted to become a priest is because I really love preaching the word of God. And when I peeled out all the outer layers of my heart, of my what, of what I wanted, I thought I wanted to become a priest, but deep in my heart, I want to proclaim God's word. And then later on, I realized that, hey, I may actually become a better communicator of God's word if I am a lay person, if I am married. Because in my entire life, yun ang, mag- yun ang naging, naging, naging hugot ko, yung buhay ng taong, yung... yung yung buhay ng lay person. That's why I realized this. Maybe I'm just, I just wanted, I realized I just wanted the preaching part. Pero hindi ko pala talaga gustong gusto at feeling ko hindi ko talaga kaya yung sacraments, etc. and everything that the priestly life actually needs to sacrifice. And so, I was at peace my decision because I realized my deepest desire is to serve God and communicate God's word. And I can actually do that when I'm a better, when I'm a married man. And I want you to think about it. Ikaw, meron ka pinagpipilian ngayon eh. Ano talaga yung gusto mo? What's your deepest desire? Naalala ko tong storya na ito. One day meron isang single na babae. Tapos pumunta siya sa kanyang spiritual advisor. Sabi niya, Father... Um, gusto ko po malaman kung ako ba talaga para sa pag-aasawa o pagmamadre. So, hindi ko kasi talaga alam eh. So, ganito na lang, Father. Humingi ako ng sign kay Lord. Meron akong kutsilyo. So, ito kunwari yung kutsilyo. Meron akong kutsilyo. Tapos, kapag ka pumaling sa kanan, ibig sabihin, I'm for married life. Pero pag pumaling sa kaliwa, bumagsak sa kaliwa, ibig sabihin, magmamadre ako. So, ito nga, Father, gusto ko sana masaksihan ninyo para malaman ko kung ano talagang gusto sa akin ni Lord. So, ginanyan niya yung ano, kutsilyo. Pagbitaw niyang ganyan, yung kutsilyo. Tandaan niyo ito, ha? Yung sa kanan, pag-aasawa. Doon sa kabila, pagbamadre. So, ngayon, binitawan niya. Pagbitaw niya ng kutsilyo, pumaling dito. Sa kanan. Tapos sabi niya, ay, sa, sa kaliwa, sorry. Sabi niya, ay, sandali, ulit-ulit tayo, ulit. Sabi sa kanya nung pare, tigil-tigilan mo ako meron kang papakutsi-kutsilyo na nalalaman dyan. Obvious naman gusto mo mag-asawa. Hindi e mag-asawa ka. Make the necessary steps to do it. And why am I sharing this to you, my dear friends? Because I want you to ask yourself this question, what is it that you really, 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 really want? And if you strip away the outer layers of your desires, you'll actually touch base with your deepest desire, which is to do God's will. Hindi ba't hindi naman ang gusto natin? Yung gawin kung anong gusto ng Diyos para sa atin. Amen? Because when God created you, He planted that will inside your heart. He planted it deep within your soul. And of course, all I wanted to do, all we wanted to do is to do His will. Amen? I guess what I'm saying is this. Discernment is not a matter of unraveling the secrets of the stars, but rather the unraveling of the secret of our heart. That's what discernment is. 
what's your deepest desire. Last but not the least is this. If you want to know God's will, you need to, the fourth W, you need the walk. What do I mean with the walk? The walk means you discover God's will as you move. You discover God's will when you act, when you work, when you explore, when you experiment, when you try, when you struggle, when you make mistakes. Ika nga ni Nike, just do it. Alam nyo, marami sa atin, sa sobrang pag-iisip, sa sobrang pagdarasal, sa sobrang pag-discern, we fail to chance upon God's will. Bakit? We are trapped by paralysis, anal- an- sorry, analysis paralysis. And this is the common mistake of spiritual people. Marami kong mga kilalang tao, ganun tinatanong ko, oh, brother, ang tagal ko nag-discern, kailangan ko bang mag-resign sa trabaho ko o hindi? Tapos, parang two years na niyang tinatanong sa akin niya, nagpapapray sa akin. Ang tanong ko sa kanya ito, oh, bakit hindi ka pa mag Ano nga ba talaga? Ang sabi niya sa akin, eh, brother, I'm still praying about it. I'm waiting on the Lord. Sa loob-loob ko, three years na. Three years na. Maybe God has actually, uh, maybe God is actually trying to, 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 to make you a decision, to move you into a decision. However, here you are, nagta-time out, nag-time out, time out lang, Lord, ah, sandali lang, ayoko pang mag-decide, ayoko pang mag, wait, sandali lang, I'm still wait, yan. Tinatago natin minsan yung katamaran nating mag Saan? Tinatago natin sa salitang, I'm waiting on the Lord. Ayan, still praying about it. But you see, my dear friends, I want you to believe in this. Minsan kasi natatako tayo mag decision Piliin yung gusto ng Diyos para sa atin at piliin yung pinakagusto sa kaibuturan ng puso natin. You wanna know why? Because we are afraid that we will fail. We are afraid that we are not enough. We are afraid that we will make mistakes. But let me tell you this. When I heeded God's call to become a communicator of God's love, I thought I was not qualified. Feeling ko hindi ko kaya. Feeling ko ang hirap. Kasi ang dami pang kat- nakataling responsibilidad dyan. But let me tell you this, ha? In my almost 20 plus years experience in the ministry, I realized this. You already have what you need in order to fulfill God's will and plan for your life. Nasa kamay mo na. Kailangan mo lang kumilos. Alam nyo, balik tayo dun sa decision ko magpapari ba ako o hindi. The reason why I really suddenly become... Uh, when, when I was growing up, I was quite sure that I am for married life. But suddenly, biglang nag-shift. Biglang gusto ko maging pare. And you wanna know why? Bakit gusto ko magpare? I was actually afraid. I was afraid that I will not be able to provide for my wife and for my upcoming kids if I get married during that time. Kasi alam ko eh, kung, kung, uh, if I'm going to be a preacher, eh, malamang, nung nag-resign nga ako sa trabaho ko noon, sabi sa akin ng boss ko, bakit ka magpe-preacher? Paano ka mabubuhay? Walang pera dyan. Ayun, kinain ako ng takot. And I thought, kapag pari ako, parang wala pa ako nakitang paring nagutom, di ba? Mga paring kakilala natin, minsan nagsisitabaan, di ba? So sabi ko, pag ako ay pari, ay, hindi ako magugutom. Walang problema sa pagkain. At wala akong kailangang provider na pamilya. Ayun, when I realized this, I was actually deciding to become a priest out of fear, not out of love. Ayan. Yeah. And you see, my dear friends, I believe in this. Sometimes you are afraid to choose this one or this one because you are afraid that you can't do it. At hindi mo kaya ang pangatawanan. But believe that when God designed you, He gave you the raw materials you need to do His will. And I want you to study these raw materials well. And you will find out what He wants you to do. Kasi ang Diyos hindi siya sadista na uutusan kang gumawa ng isang bagay at pupwersahin ka niyang piliin itong bagay na ito tapos alam niya naman na hindi mo gusto yun. He gave you specific opportunities, gifts, temperament, personality precisely because He wants you to use them to bless the world. Ayan. Am I making sense here? Apat na W, the word, the wise, the why, and the walk. 
all you need to do is to cooperate with God's grace. Now, you might be asking me, Brother Velden, eh paano kung pumili ako? Sabi mo, God's, is, God's will is your deepest desire. Paano pag pumili ako at nagkamali ako ng pagpili? Ayan na. Ito ang gusto kong sabihin sa inyo. You know what? Relax ka lang. Kung nagkamali ka ng pagpili, I want you to know that God's will is bigger than we think it is. It's not just a narrow path na yun lang dapat mong sundin. God's will is bigger than we think it is. Hindi makitid ang utak ng Diyos. Why? Because if you have chosen wrongly, God has God is all-powerful. God has the ability to correct and lead you back to His plan. And that's the power of second chances. And I believe in this. Ang Diyos hindi makitid ang utak. God, I know God will be happy if I become a priest. God will become happy if I become a married man. As long as my life glorifies Him, no problem. And if you make a mistake, you can always go back to God. Now, eto na lang. One last point before I go to question and answer. Ito. You might be asking, Brother, eh, ginawa ko na lahat yan. Parang malabo pa rin. Ang hirap talagang piliin kung anong gagawin. Ito ang pinaka-important barometer sa lahat, ha? Pinaka-importanting kailangan nyo pag-isipan pag magde-decision kayo. When discerning for a big decision, always ask this question. Will this decision, will this action make me more loving? Again, when choosing between two big decisions, will this decision make me more loving. Meron akong kaibigan. Ang ganda ng buhay. Uh, ano, ang, yung buhay niya dito, okay naman. Kumakain sila tatlong beses sang araw. Um, medyo, minsan, paycheck to paycheck, medyo mahirap ang buhay. And then suddenly, nagkaroon siya ng biglang malaking offer to work abroad. Kaso, itong problema. Itong kaibigan ko ito, torn ngayon siya. Well then, kukunin ko ba itong trabaho ko abroad? or kukunin ko, or magsistay ba ako dito sa Pilipinas? Kasi sayang yung kikitain doon. Maganda naman yun. So, tapos later on, babalik ako dito. Meron siya ng mga plano-plano ganyan. And then, sabi niya, tulungan mo naman ako ng magiging decision ko. And all I said is, when you're making a big decision, choose to ask yourself, will this make me more loving? Then later on, I found out, he came back to me, sabi niya, well then, dito na lang sa Pilipinas. Sabi, ko, sabi niya, Kaya ko naman gustong umalis kasi para sa pamilya ko. And narealize ko ito. Bago ko tawagin ng Diyos na kung trabaho, una muna akong tinawag ng Diyos maging asawa, maging tatay sa pamilya ko. And so I feel, sabi niya, I feel that I will be better off. I will be more at peace if I stay here in the Philippines. Oo, medyo mahirap ang buhay. Pero gagawin ko na lang paraan. At sabi niya, tulad nga ng sinabi mo, I have all the raw materials and all the chances and all the opportunities that God wants me to have in order for me to be a great husband, a great father, a great family man. And I said to him, congratulations, you have come up with a decision because you chose to do what you think can make you more loving. Amen? Why do you need to ask this question? Will this make me more loving? Because brothers and sisters, I believe God's will, ultimate will, is love. Kapag litong-lito ka na, piliin mo ang pagmamahal. Kasi hindi ka nagkakamali pag yan ang pinili. Amen? Now, I like to open the floor the comment section or some questions. Maybe I'd like to answer maybe three or four questions before uh, before we before I close to my final story and before we go into worship. Meron po bang tanong? Maybe our tech guys can pick some questions for us. Ayan. Walang tanong? Baka sagot meron kayo. <laughs> Ayan. Meron po ba? About the topic, ayan. Ito, meron tanong. Ang sabi, bakit ganun bro, nasa akin na lahat ng tools? Nag-aral pa ako para pagandahin yung output. 
pero nawala pa rin lahat. Eh, we're helping spread God's word naman. Ayan. Sige. Thank you so much, Yabi, for the question. Um, many times, when God is telling us to move, we make a move. And when we make a move, it's important that we know if we really believe, sometimes we think kasi na, okay, ito sinabi sa akin ni Lord, sige, sundin mo. But you also need to understand that most of the time, when God is asking you to plant, you plant seeds. When God is asking you to plant, you need to keep on planting. Kapag hindi porket ginawa mo ang isang bagay today, eh maririp mo na kagad yung harvest nito. Case in point, I was called by God to become a communicator of God's word. That was my calling way, way back. But true enough, tama yung boss ko noon. Wala nga talagang pera kung ako ay preacher. Dahil wala, I'm doing ministry work. And then siguro may konting kapag nagbibigay ng talk sa labas, mayroong konting stipend. But I, I, was, I was planting seeds during that time. And it took me maybe two, three, four years until one day biglang boom. I, I, when I got married, I think God knows that I need to earn more financially for my life. And then He opened opportunities for me. Bigla na lang meron ako narinig na tawag na ano, naghahanap sila ng corporate speaker. And He want me, He wants me to be their speaker kahit na alam niyang preacher ako. And then I grabbed the opportunity. And then it paved the way for me to actually, um, to, to actually become a corporate speaker and then open that, a, a new op- door op- of opportunity for my life. However, take note, from the moment I decided to become a preacher and to become a communicator of God's love, it took me three to four years of planting and planting and planting and planting until I got the harvest. Right now, hindi na po ako naghahanap ng kliyente para magkaroon ng talk. Yung mga kliyente ko na po ang lumalapit para ako mag-talk sa kanila. And I'm so blessed. But Whenever I, if if I will go back eight years ago, nine years ago, I would not even say that, Lord, back, uh, na magiging ganito yung sitwasyon. And I could have easily given up during that time. But that's why it's very important for us, yes, to keep on planting. And then as you go along and walk along, maybe merong ibang sinasabi ulit ang Diyos. Because you need to understand that God's will is a lifelong journey. So you have obeyed, and then there's fruit or not, there's failure. As again, the Lord, ano nga bang pinapagawa mo sa akin at this moment? Hmm. Ganda ng tanong ni Yabi. Kasi tanong yan ng marami. Ayan. From Iana, paano po pag-torn ka between passion mo versus purpose mo talaga? What will you choose po? Ayan, ang ganda ng tanong yan. Passion, purpose. Ayan. Tayong mga millennials, we are so big between passion and purpose. Uh, you need to factor in another thing. That's, that is potential. Tanungin mo, bago mo tanungin ano yung gustong-gusto mo talaga, tanungin mo muna, ano nga ba ang galing mo? Saan ka ba pinagpala? Saan ka ba binless? Ano ang gifts mo? Ano ang talents mo? Ano yung meron ka? What do you have in your hands? Because chances are, kung nilagay ng Diyos yung talento na yan, yung galing na sa iyo, malamang dyan ka rin, malamang magugustuhan mo rin yan. And, I, I love this quote by Mark Cuban. Si Mark Cuban, ano siya, uh, owner siya ng Dallas Mavericks. Tapos, sabi niya, sabi niya ito, he's, he has something to say about passion and purpose. Sabi niya, many people are talking about their passion. But here's what you need to do, sabi niya. You need to do what you are good at. Gawin mo yung bagay na kung saan ka magaling. Because naturally, when you are good at something, you tend to like it. And when you like it, you will become passionate at it. And then it will become your passion. And then it will turn into a deeper purpose for you. Am I making sense here? Ako po, gustong gusto ko mag-basketball talaga. Ay, nako, ang problema ito, kahit na anong practice ko, hindi ako kailan magiging kasing galing ni Lebron James. Pero gusto ko yun. However, hindi ko galing yun. Pero ito, alam ko, galing ko yung pagiging communicator ni Lord. And Nung start, hindi, gan, hindi gaanong magaling, nagkakamali. But as I went along, ginawa ko, may nakita kong konting fruit, tapos ginawa ko. At dahil galing ko ito, nagkakaroon ng bunga. At dahil ginagawa ko yung gusto ko, nagugu- sorry, nag- ginagawa ko yung galing ko, nagugustuhan ko siya. 
and then later on it bore fruit a thousandfold. That's what I'm talking about. Tanong mo muna, ano yung galing mo? What's your potential? What do you have in your hands? And hopefully you can definitely it'll turn your it into your passion. Ayan. From Aaron, how can you get the fear out of the way so that you can make that decision you need? Especially if there are people depending on you. Ay, ang ganda ng hugot. Parang hugot talaga ng isang tatay. Kilala ko yun si Aaron. Um, the beautiful thing about um, kanina na sabi ko kanina, you just need to keep on walking. Just do it, sabi nga ng Nike, eh, di ba? And I mean it in a positive way because Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is being afraid and doing it anyway. However, sometimes what drives our fear is that our is our responsibility. Kasi alam mong merong madadamay. Katulad na, kaya nga, sa mga single dito, gusto ko sabihin sa inyo to, habang single pa kayo, gawin nyo na lahat try nyo na lahat, lahat ng pagkakamali. Sige na, mabankrap ka, uh, malugi ka sa negosyo, lahat-lahat, uh, mapahiya ka na, okay lang. Bakit? Kasi wala pa masyadong nakaangkas sa iyo. Kaya that's the privilege of, become, of being a single. But if you are a married person, ayan, mas mabigat na yung, 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 yung responsibilidad. I guess you just need to weigh the, you, you need to weigh the pros and cons and then while you are trying out something new, try it out without actually, um, without um, leaving your responsibility with your family. So, pwede kang sumubok, pero at the same time, of course, you need to secure your family. Kasi nga, tandaan nyo, while, I guess, I'm just guessing, maybe Aaron is conflicted about, about maybe his passion at work or whatever. Meron pinapagawa sa kanya, Lord, the bagong project or bagong business. Based sa pagkakilala ko kay Aaron, I hope I'm I, I hope I'm right. If not, please correct me, Aaron. And marami sa atin natatakot sumubok kasi syempre may responsibilidad ka. But while you are trying out something new, you need to secure at least the minimum that your family needs. Because if God is calling you to, to, to venture into a new business or to a new hobby, and I want you to know that God has called you to become a husband and a father first. And, kumbaga, may hierarchy kasi ang calling eh. Ang unang calling natin sa Diyos, number one, ito ang pinaka-importante, dapat sundan natin siya. We need to choose Him. Number two, what is your state of life? Are you for married life, for single blessedness, or for religious life? And in your case, you're for married life. So, that takes priority over what you are actually be doing with your talents and skills. So, if you feel that God is calling to you to new waters, to, to, to the unknown, as you go along with that, as you follow the Lord, you need to also secure yung, yung kailangan ng pamilya mo. And at lahat ng mga nakadepende sa'yo. And remember this, sige lang, gawin mo, and the Lord will supply you with everything that you need. That ends our questions. And if you have more questions, we can send a PM in our Feast Bikutan Facebook page. Amen? Ayan. Before I close off with my final story, let me first thank each and every one of you who, was, who are continually giving here at Feast at Home. Maraming maraming salamat po sa generosity po ninyo. At alam nyo, eight months na po tayo na sa pandemic and this Feast at Home has given people a lot of hope, a lot of inspiration. And this will not be possible. Hindi natin ito mapagpapatuloy, kundi dahil sa pagbibigay ninyo. Thank you for your love offerings, for your tithes. And should you want to give, and alam ko sa inyo, marami sa inyo, you're regular givers. If you haven't given yet, I encourage you to give for the first time. Maybe God is touching your heart and trying to, trying to whisper to your ear that, hey, maybe you can help. Tandaan niyo po ito. Mas masarap po ang pakiramdam na nagbibigay kesa sa tumatanggap ng tulong. Yung iba kasi minsan sinasabi nila, kawawa naman tayo, lagi na lang tayo nagbibigay, tayo nagbibigay. Eh mas mabuti na tayo ang nagbibigay kesa tayo ang nanghihingi. Di po ba? So, if you would like to give to our feast, the, the ways to give is flashed right now on the screen. 
So you can give through bank deposit, GCash, wire transfer, and dyan po lahat ng detalye. Again, thank you so much for your generosity. We, will, we cannot do this without you. Amen? So, ayan po ang ways to give, bank deposits, etc., etc. BDO, East West Bank, GCash, all the details are there below. Yeah. Now, let me end with this. We always sing this at the feast. Ito pong pag tinataas natin yung Bible from Psalms 119 to 119 verse 105. Anong sinasabi? Kinakanta natin. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You see, I love this analogy. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Pag naiimagine ko yan, alam nyo nung unang panahon, wala silang flashlight, walang meralko, walang, maswere tayo, hindi pa tayo napuputulan, alam ko may super bagyo, di ba? Pero nung unang panahon, ang source lang ng ilaw nila paggabi, yung lampara. And that is very important. Pag hawak mo ang lampara, pag tingin mo sa malayo, wala kang makikita, pitch black. But when you have a lamp, it's the light is just enough for you to see the next step. Yung nasa malapit lang. And you see, the wonderful thing about is this. The, 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 the Word of God tells us, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And you see, most of us are trying to know God's will. Lord, ano ba yung nandun sa madilim? But the Lord is reminding us, He is our light. He is our lamp. He is with us. And all we need to do is this. We just need to take another step. At alam nyo, kapag bit-bit niya yung lampara, at when you take another step, you will see the next step. Guess what? And then you take another step. Anong makikita mo? You will see the next step. Yung step na hindi mo nakita before you moved forward. You see, my dear friends, what am I pointing at? The lamp is just enough for the next few steps. And God is asking us to discern what is His will. Remember this. Jesus is your lamp. All we need to do is to keep walking. Even if the future is uncertain, keep walking. Even if the plan is unclear, keep walking. Even if the path is dark, keep walking. Because remember, Jesus is your light. He will light your path. All you need to do is to obey Him, follow His will, and keep on walking because definitely he will show you the way amen can i invite you into prayer as we come into worship in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen father in heaven we praise and we thank you for this wonderful time you had with us thank you for speaking into our hearts most of us oh god we are afraid to take the next step most of us god we are confused with what you want for us to do, O oh Lord. But Lord, right now, may we just be still in your presence, in your embrace. Open our hearts, Lord, so that we might go deeper and deeper into our hearts so that we will be able to know our deepest desire, which is actually to do your will. And Lord, we believe that wherever you go, Wherever you want us to go, we will follow you. Because ultimately, we just want to be one with you. We want to live like you. We want to be like you. Just be with you wherever you would want to lead us. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters here who might be feeling fear in their hearts right now. I pray that let that you let your their faith be above every fear in their hearts. But most especially, O oh Lord, let your love be bigger than all our fears. All this, Father, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's come worship our God as we sing to him. Now that we have heard God's word, may this make our faith stronger 
and may we believe Him and trust Him that He is ever present in our pains, in our gaze, and all the days of our lives. With our hearts filled by His love, let us now come to Him and say, Thank you so much for watching and being with us here at Feast at Home. And I'd like to remind you that next week we are going to be going back to our regular programming. I'll be speaking at 10.30 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. again with Brother Arun and Brother James Nicolas. And thank you for joining us today. And remember, keep on walking. Alam nyo, discerning God's will is a lifelong journey. In fact, until now, I you think you may think that I have figured it out na alam ko na dahil alam ko na yung sacred mission ko. But as as I go along the way, as I mature, as I walk with the Lord, nare-realize ko na meron pang kailangan ito. Kailangan palaging sumusunod sa kanya, kailangan laging nakikinig sa kanya. Because discerning God's will is a lifelong journey. And many times you will trip, you will make mistakes, but it's okay. You just need to stand up and keep walking. Amen? Just be happy that as you are journeying with the Lord, you are actually enjoying the ride with Him by your side. Happy discerning. My prayer is that you will know what, God, what God's will is for your life. Maraming maraming salamat po. We will see you next week. God bless you.